Sight is one of the most important senses because it allows us to gain knowledge about the world. Without vision, our ability to know what your surrounding is are is limited. In this video, I will explain the complex structure of the eye with the six extra ocular muscles attached on it. First, we have the sclera. The sclera is the white part of the eye, comes from the Greek word sclerus, which means hard. It's occupied 5 6 of the eyeball, and the function of sclera is to protect and support the eyeball. Next, we have the iris. Iris is the colored part of the eye. The function of iris is to regulate the amount of light entering the eye by the ability to enlarge and shrink depend how bright light is. And we have the cornea. The cornea is the main transparent refractive apparatus of the eye. It's occupy one sixth of the eyeball. And then we have the choroid. Choroid is the layer behind the retina. It maintains the temperature of the eye and it supplies blood and nutrient to the retina and nourishes all of the other structures within the eye. And then we have the retina. Retina is the most important structure of the eyeball. The purpose of the retina is to receive light that the lens has focus, convert the light into the neural signals. And now, let's go with the six extraocular muscles attached on the eyeball. Extrinsic muscles of the eyeball, extraocular muscles, come from the Latin word masculi externi bulbi oculi, set of muscles located within each orbit and connected with the eye responsible for the eye movements. The name recti is derived from the Latin for straight. This represents the fact that the recti muscles have a direct path from origin to attachment. The motor innervation of the extraocular muscles is provided by the three cranial nerves. First, ocular motor nerve or the CN3, trochlear nerve or the CN4, abducens nerve or the CN6. The medial rectus muscle, largest of all EOM, it passes along the medial wall of the orbit and is inserted into the sclera about 5.5 mm from the corneal limbus. Innervated by oculomotor nerve or the CN3, it adducts the eyeball when the eye is in the primary position. Inferior oblique muscle, innervated by oculomotor nerve or the CN3, it extorts, abducts, and elevates the eye. Superior oblique muscle, longest and the thinnest of the EUM, innervated by the trochlear nerve or the CN4. It intorts, abducts, and depresses the eye. Superior rectus muscle, longest muscle, inserts into the sclera about 7.7 .7 mm from the corneal limbus, innervated by the oculomotor nerve or the CN3. It elevates, adducts, and intorts the eyeball. Lateral rectus muscle. It passes along the lateral wall of the orbit, crosses the tendon of inferior oblique muscle, innervated by abducens nerve or CN6. It abducts the eyeball when the eye is in the primary position. Inferior rectus muscle. Shortest of the four recti muscle. Insert into the inferior portion of the sclera about 6.5 mm from the corneal limbus, innervated by oculomotor nerve 3 or the CN3, it depresses, adducts, and extorts the eyeball when the eye is in the primary position. Primary position, in which the eyes assume when the head is erect, a point straight ahead on the horizon is fixed upon. Secondary position, in which the eyes assume when the lateral or vertical movements are involved. Tertiary position, in which the eyes assume when it moves in a direction which is the combination of both lateral and vertical eye movement or oblique. Action of extraocular muscles from primary, secondary to tertiary. First, we have the medial rectus, primary, adduction, secondary, and tertiary nan. Lateral rectus, primary, abduction, secondary, and tertiary nan. Inferior rectus, primary, depression, secondary excycloduction, tertiary 
adduction. Superior rectus, primary elevation, secondary encycloduction, tertiary adduction. Inferior oblique, primary excycloduction, secondary elevation, tertiary abduction. Superior oblique, primary encycloduction, secondary depression, tertiary abduction.